Spider-Man Fall from Home was, I was really excited for it, and I know what prompted me, but I didn't watch any theory videos this time, you know, I normally dig on my research and everything that I can find, but the only theory that I had in mind was the future, so, yay. And it wasn't me for a theory, it was just a logistics. Anyway, moving on. How was Spider-Man Far From Home? Spider-Man Far From Home, it, it's being talked about. It's being talked about. And I think when I came out, I felt like, oh, my, oh my cheeks, the main credit scene and the post credit scene was just spectacular. I might even do a breakdown of those two because I really think there's a lot of things in those two scenes that you might miss. I, I I might do it when it comes out on DVD where I can analyze it a bit more because definitely the second post credit scene, if you've seen the movie, the second post credit scene has a lot of things going on in it um, and it kind of retcons the entire movie for the second post credit scene. The first one, not too much. But how was my best life? Well, the first 30 minutes, there was no action. At all. You know, the, that mob gunfight before he went on holidays, that was deleted from the actual movie. So, no action at all has to be a positive thing. Well, it was a negative thing, but it was a positive thing thanks to all of these actors leading along, you know, leading this charming story with their charming jokes and their charming acting. And I think the acting, the jokes, just the music, the song choices in general, they were actually pretty, pretty good. And then you get the elementals showing up. And the elementals are like just this horde bad guys, they're just like, oh, I'm a bad guy, rah, you know, and then they all merge together at the end, and so like, I'm the biggest bad guy, you love the first boy, man, so my man's like, I can't do this, I can't do this, you know, so, and yeah, they're like, they're like the most generic villains ever, but they're the most powerful villains ever, considering they come from another dimension. And since they are the most powerful villains you know, ever, Spider-Man has to kind of take responsibility. And I like how this movie isn't just a continuation from Endgame or a continuation from Homecoming, but that this movie is also pretty much like a little tribute to Iron Man. At the start, it has like a little tribute thing. You'll see it, it's... It, I I thought it was like super funny when they revealed what it actually was, but yeah. And all throughout the movie, everywhere he goes, he sees his face. So they even show flashbacks to like Civil War and the first Iron Man. So um, and I think I think they really captured what the world would be like after Endgame. They really captured what that world would be like. And I don't know how I feel about it. That's the thing. I kind of want everything to be back to normal. Like, I want the events of Endgame to play out the way it should. But I feel like this movie was a little less fun than the first one. I don't know why there was so much jokes, there was so much just quick banter, you know, double entendres between the characters, but like, it was less funnier. Like, the first movie wasn't bogged down by this emotional death. And I think, that's the thing, I've been thinking about this a lot since I saw it, I think I said it like, two days ago, thinking about this a lot, Peter, Peter is that character that now is having to deal with the death of Iron Man, which is why he's not making any jokes, and everyone around him, else around him is making jokes, 
just like they did Homecoming, but in Homecoming, Peter also made jokes. So now Peter's like this really dark character. You know, and he's just like, what should I do, what should I do? He's not cracking jokes or anything, which... It's not what I want a Peter to be. But really, that's it. There were like a few scenes that I didn't like as well. There were, there were a few scenes where it like goes... I, it might be a spoiler to say, but like... It was the scenes where... He like changes suit instantly and then changes suit again and then it's like he's like you know if i ever get it around to doing a mid or post credit scene you know breakdownish, i will actually have to address that scene but for those of you that don't know this is spoilers so i want you to skip down to this time if you have not seen spider-man far from home uh, three, two, one. Okay, so the scene that I'm actually talking about is where Mysterio goes like all in Spider-Man's head, makes him see illusions, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I just found that really, really, really trippy. Um, and not in a good way. But that's in my, I mean, the one where he's just in complete darkness and he can't see anything and he has to battle the little drones. See, that's fine. That, that's fine. But like the whole woo 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 it's like quickly changing shit. Like nah. Hey newcomers, welcome back. So that is my review for Spider-Man Far From Home. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? I don't know, I'm just copying stuff. Let me know down below in the comment section what did you think about it and I will see you in another video. Bye. That's how I felt after the credits started rolling. Bye.